All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, yep, so as he said, I'm Patrick MacArthur. I'm here today to talk about my uh, Yordi May driver. Uh, I, so I developed URDMA while I was an intern with uh, the IBM Zurich Research Lab, uh, and they have since open sourced it, and I am continuing to work on it for my uh, PhD work. Uh, so it's a so you already made as a software already made driver, and so the first question is what makes this different from existing software already made drivers? Uh, so if we look at what exists today, we have uh, primarily t uh, we have Soft iWarp and Soft Rocky, uh, and they implement uh, iWarp and Rocky V2, and, and they, but they implement it with their with the data transfer in kernel space. Uh, and uh, they run unmodified verbs applications and they were designed to have as high performance as they can given that they are software implementation. Uh, I should also mention the existence uh, in libfabrics of a sockets provider that is a user space implementation using TCP IP sockets. However, it was meant as just a test driver while for libfabric and not so much as something to actually offer performance. So the question is why have verbs, uh, these software verbs implementations been written uh, using kernel the kernel sockets API. And there are two reasons for it, one of which is design choices made in the user space verbs API. Uh, verbs will not load a user space driver unless there is a kernel driver already loaded. It basically scans the devices that are presented by the kernel, and then for each device it finds the corresponding user space device. Uh, so if there's no kernel device, your user space driver just won't get loaded. Uh, also, it defers connection management to the kernel, uh, which was a conscious design decision uh, intended for us uh, to keep security policy in the kernel. Uh, and also, CQ events are delivered from the kernel. Uh, Additionally, uh, an implementation that used the user space sockets API would require both user space and kernel space involvement, which is obviously go uh, not very good because that requires a ton of context, which is which defeats the whole purpose. Uh, on the other hand, using the kernel sockets API, uh, the one-sided RDMA read and RDMA write operations can be handled entirely in the kernel without waking the user threads. Uh, and additionally, you can use uh, the send page mechanism to send TCP segments with zero copy. Um, and thus, the path of least resistance has been to implement these using the sockets API in the kernel. Uh, URDMA wants to do a software RDMA driver with the data transfer entirely in user space. Uh, and do this with high performance and be able to run existing verbs applications. So the question is, so why do we want a user space implementation? There's a few reasons. Uh, user space is far easier to develop for than kernel space, uh, which makes it easier to use as a development vehicle for new RDMA features. Um, and we can avoid context switches between kernel and user space, especially for applications that have to do a lot of small sends, uh, where the optimization of doing of uh, doing the large RDMA reads and writes entirely in the kernel doesn't really help. Uh, so luckily, so uh, we leverage DPDK to be able to do this. Uh, DPDK is a framework that was originally developed by Intel and it is, has been just brought into the open source and is now an independent project. And it leverages the Linux uh, UIO and VFIO uh, subsystems to map Ethernet NICs into user space. And it provides a number of features. Uh, it provides bulk uh, packet transmit and receive directly to the NIC hardware queues. It provides NUMA-aware memory buffer pools that use huge pages that are meant to be aligned in such a way that uh, different buffers use different memory channels and are all on, on the correct NUMA nodes for whatever uh, cores are trying to access them. 
uh, high performance multi-core data structures, including uh, very efficient ring queues that can that can be accessed by a producer thread and a consumer thread at the same time without blocking each other. Uh, and it provides access to all the hardware packet filtering and TCP and UDP offloads that modern uh, Ethernet NICs support. On the other hand, it does not support things that, that require uh, more hardware support. It does not support RDMA since it's designed to be used with standard Ethernet NICs that do not offer direct data placement uh, capability. And it doesn't provide libraries for network layer or transport layer protocol logic. Uh, if you want that, you either have to write it yourself or use a, a another library uh, outside the scope of DPDK itself. Uh, but using DPDK for uh, user space RDMA verbs allows us to entirely eliminate the kernel from the data transfer path and thus uh, create a more efficient user space uh, software verbs implementation. Uh, so this diagram is a diagram that pretty much all of you should be familiar with. Uh, uh, Okay, there we go. So uh, basically, I'm, basically this is to contrast with what DPDK does. So in verbs, you have a send work request. That send work request refers to one or more me memory regions. Uh, and when you post a send, it uh, goes into a queue in the HCA. Uh, and then when it processes that, it takes the data from each individual packet directly from virtual memory onto the wire, prepends all the necessary headers. And then on the reverse end, the uh, program has previously uh, enqueued a bunch of uh, receive work requests. And as each packet is received, the data is placed directly into the corresponding memory region. Uh, and the uh, user gets notified when the, when the operation completes. DPDK uh, is a little bit different. Uh, so here we have, it's a little simpler and we just have this notion of packet buffers that contain the data to send along with uh, some metadata about it. Uh, and it contains basically the, raw, the whole raw packet. So it includes all of the ethernet and T TCP IP headers. Uh, when, the pack, when you uh, do the call to send a burst of packets, uh, it creates a send descriptor in the NIC that refers to this, the packet buffer. And then as the send descriptors are uh, processed, uh, the data is placed directly onto the wire from the memory buffer, uh, including the uh, whatever uh, TCP IP headers and ethernet headers were in the packet itself. And then on the receiving side, uh, the receive, uh, these get matched up with receive descriptors. Each receive descriptor points to a packet buffer in the user virtual memory space. The data and the data is placed directly off the wire into these packet buffers. And then the user uh, calls receive burst to get a burst of receive packets off the wire. Uh, the next thing that I want to briefly mention is DPDK's thread model. Uh, DPDK uh, uses its own threads, so when you initialize it, it creates a, a logical core thread per CPU that these are technically just like any other P threads, but DPDK gives them some extra metadata that they use in their API. So they, uh, in, in a lot of cases, uh, they expect you to call their API functions from uh, Lcor threads. Uh, and DPDK sets the CPU affinity of these threads. So in this example, this is basically the default configuration where uh, each uh, Lcor gets bound to a specific CPU. Uh, and then you can have other user P threads on this uh, as well. Though, And in this example, I have one that is running on core zero, but it doesn't have a specific CPU affinity set, so it can run on any CPU. Uh, for URDMAs, uh, we don't use this feature uh, un all, except for where we are required to, so we just uh, use the master L core as our progress thread. And the way we do this is uh, when the user calls into verbs, we create a thread and then initialize DPDK there. 
The reason we do that is because DPDK uh, is, was designed as an app, more of an application framework than as a library. So it does some things that are impolite for libraries to do. And since our verbs driver is a library, we want to try to be polite to the application that's calling us. So DPDK by, uh, takes its initialization function, takes command line arguments, uh, it consumes all available huge pages by default, and it changes the CPU affinity of the calling thread. Uh, this last one is really the big one that's impolite, and it means that potentially any threads that get created after DPDK is initialized all wind up uh, bound to a single CPU core, and the user has no idea what's going on. Uh, so therefore, we uh, tell the DPDK not to create any L cores other than the master that we have pre-created, and that this separates DPDK from the user threads and does not affect the CPU affinity of user threads. And one final background thing, uh, DPDK has a, a uh, library in it called KNI, which allows you to present a virtual NIC to the kernel. Uh, and so this we use in order to allow the kernel to uh, send messages onto the network, which as I mentioned, Verbs does its connection management in the kernel. So this is how we are able to have the kernel uh, send messages out on the wire. So the way this works is that you have the NIC that's bound to DPDK, uh, and the NIC uh, talks to the outside world, v uh, between the outside world and DPDK, and there's also a KNI interface that goes from DPDK to the kernel, and then the DPDK application itself is is responsible for shuffling messages back and forth. So, uh, so URDMA itself. Uh, so the design of URDMA, we implement the iWarp, the upper layers of iWarp. So for those familiar with iWarp, this is the DDP and RDMA P protocols, and we run it over the UDP transport protocol. Uh, with a thin uh, shim for reliability, that basically I made up with some inspiration from the uh, a similar protocol that memcached uses to run over UDP. Uh, this was done to simplify the implementation uh, as otherwise I would have had to re-implement the entire uh, TCP uh, state machine. Uh, we, uh, we have a small kernel component as required by verbs. Uh, that does basically the absolute minimum that is required to have a, 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 a verbs driver. So it does the initialization, it does the connection management, and uh, it sends CQ events. Uh, it's, it performs the connection establishment, uh, and then it basically takes that virtual UDP connection and sends it right to user space. And at that point, from that point on, user space has complete control of it and is the only one sending, sending messages on that particular UDP port. Uh, and it uses KNI to accomplish this. The packet processing is done in this background thread that I had mentioned in this previous slide. Uh, and uh, this is done so that we have quick response uh, to RDMA packets. Uh, and we use hardware receive filtering to assign each queue pair to a unique uh, NIC receive queue. Uh, now, part of the reason that we use this, the hardware filtering is also so that we can have multi-process support. So DPDK by default assumes that your entire application is a single process uh, because it essentially is taking your NIC, mapping it into user space, and that process has complete control over that NIC. Uh, but DPDK offers a feature by which you can delegate control to secondary processes, uh, and DPDK uh, considers the primary and secondary process to be one combined DPDK application, uh, with a caveat that they ca that the threads cannot share the same L core ID. So in URDMA, we have a user daemon called URDMA D that is responsible for initializing DPDK and doing all of the management and control aspects with DPDK. So whenever a Verbs application launches, it contacts URDMA D to get its 
the Alcor ID it should use for the DPDK master thread. It, and it also is responsible for assigning the uh, receive and transmit queues that the application queue pairs will use, along with setting up the hardware filtering at the correct time, and it will get into exactly how that is done in a little bit. Uh, the verbs provider is just a normal verbs uh, provider library. It sets the process up as a secondary DPDK process. Uh, and then the DPDK master Elcor acts as the background progress thread, as I mentioned. Uh, thus, each of the verbs process has direct access to its Ethernet NIC hardware queues, and because the, each verbs application has its, is accessing its own queue pairs and thus its own NIC queues, they do not interfere with each other. So, a schematic diagram of the components in URDMA. Um, up at the top we have the application, uh, and then in orange we have the verbs components, where we have the RDMA CM, its kernel component, verbs and its kernel component, and then in blue we have URDMA itself and its kernel component, uh, and then uh, URDMA user space uses DPDK, uh, DPDK uh, uses the VFIO subsystem, uh, and as well as using the KNI kernel module to, uh, which is a DPDK component, uh, to present a NIC to the, uh, for the URDMA driver and RDMA CM to use for connection management, uh, which is required for the iWARP CM to operate. So because of the way the iWARP CM works, we, ha we have to do the connection establishment in kernel space. Uh, this means that basically the initial exchange to establish the connection, those messages are actually sent from kernel space to the KNI interface and that gets shuffled by user space out the actual uh, hardware NIC. Uh, so the whole process looks like, uh, so when the application creates a queue pair, at that point, uh, it asks the RDMA D master daemon to assign a uh, assign transmit and receive queues for that queue pair, and then it uses the normal U verbs mechanism to uh, create the underlying kernel queue pair, which is needed for the uh, uh, RDMA CM. Uh, then, at some point later, the application calls RDMA connect and ex or accept, and then just before the uh, before the uh, our RDMA CM sends the established event back to user space. We send a message back to the RDMA, URDMA D master daemon, uh, it, notifying it that a queue pair has been connected. And that includes uh, the association between the queue pair and the CM ID, as well as the IP address and port numbers that are being used so that it can set up the hardware receive filtering rules. Uh, so that it gets bound to the correct uh, correct queues. And this is important so that, that this happens before the first message actually gets sent on the connection uh, so that it winds up getting directed to the correct hardware queue. Uh, and these messages here are done on a private character device. Uh, and while that is a bit of a hackish way to do that. It's the cleanest way I could find to accomplish that. Uh, so the actual data transfer process, uh, we have, uh, to go over this briefly, we have when the user sends a work request, uh, in the user thread, it just, all, it, all the user thread does is enqueues these work requests onto a ring queue that gets picked up by the progress thread. And then when the progress thread dequeues that, the send wookie, uh, then it does all the work of sending it. So it uh, transforms the data into a bunch of packets to send on the wire and does all, all the appropriate processing there. And likewise for a receive request, uh, it takes each incoming packet and and then satisfies the receive request with the appropriate incoming packets. Uh, and then upon completion, the progress thread enqueues onto the CQ, the uh, send or receive cookie. And then at that point, 
the user th a user thread will call IBV pull CQ uh, DQ, which will DQ the. Uh, a certain number of completions from the CQ, and then the user gets his send work completion. So, uh, just a quick uh, performance uh, study. Uh, we did this on just a pair of uh, identical systems, uh, and these systems have Intel 40 gig NICs on them, uh, and are otherwise running Ubuntu 1610 with uh, stock with the stock kernel and verbs that were supplied with that version. Uh, and we ran some micro benchmarks uh, from the perf test suite. Uh, along with a uh, micro benchmark from our, our own UNH extended sockets uh, implementation. So uh, the first is the uh, perf test latency tests. Uh, on the right is soft eye warp, on the left is URDMA. Uh, the scales are the same. So uh, for the uh, write and send operations, uh, the we see that the that URDMA is out is has better latency for most message sizes by a, a little less than uh, two times, uh, and although the RDMA read performs a little worse, uh, it's still about the same comparison. Uh, Throughput wise, on the other hand, uh, we see soft eye warp is basically is able to achieve fairly close to line rate, whereas URDMA is not quite is not quite able to receive achieve line rate. Uh, the reason is because, as I mentioned earlier, soft eye warp uses the send page kernel to uh, to do the these transfers. Uh, with zero copy on the send side, whereas URDMA uh, does not presently do that, so it is performing data copies. Uh, and these data copies are uh, what I believe to be reducing the performance here. Uh, we, uh, now this graph, these paragraphs is showing the comparison for UNH EXS's throughput test. Um, and we s here for the larger messages, uh, we see that again, soft eye warp is able to eventually outperform URDMA. Uh, for smaller message sizes, uh, it is more comparable. So to conclude, I, existing software RDMA implementations today have been done in kernel space, where, but DBDK allows us to implement a verbs driver or, with the data transfer in user space. Uh, and so that the kernel has no involvement in the data transfer path in a software already made implementation. Uh, and the only things that uh, uh, are left in the kernel are the things that verbs absolutely requires, which are the initialization and the connection management. Uh, we're able to run unmodified verbs applications and URDMA is designed to have high performance. Uh, we, ha we, we can already demonstrate uh, a decent small message latency. Uh, we need to tune it further for throughput. Uh, for future work, uh, f investigating ways to uh, elide the copies on the send side, uh, I believe there are ways that DPDK can do that. Uh, additionally, looking at reliable datagram support, looking at integration with user mode storage, uh, such as SPDK or CRAIL, uh, and complete and uh, additionally uh, shared receive queues and uh, other gaps. Uh, so you already made development is done on GitHub. Uh, the URL is here. There's no formal release as of yet. Uh, it's, uh, it's not integrated into RDMA core, which may become an issue in the future as RDMA core uh, no longer supports out of tree drivers. Uh, but th the version that is on GitHub right now has been tested on Ubuntu 16.10 and DPDK 16.07. Uh, I 
I have not tested it with newer versions of DBDK, but I uh, see no reason why it wouldn't work. So uh, thank you for listening, and I'd be happy to take any questions. I have a couple of questions. Yep. Um, so first thing, uh, the first question is, um, uh, you said the DPDK ties into one of the um, processes. Right? Suppose I'm already using DPDK, assuming I use two different ports. Is it still possible to use uh, URDME on a different port, but on the same host? Uh so if I understand your question, you're asking if uh, I can use, if, if you're running a DPDK application as, oh, as well as a verbs application with URDMA. Yes. Yeah, so that is possible as long as you uh, isolate the URDMA process and the DPDK process onto separate NICs. A separate NICs, yes. Uh, yeah, or, at, or separate NIC ports. Yeah. Okay. Uh, second is uh, you showed the latencies on uh, soft IRAP. Oh yeah, soft IWAP. How does it compare with soft Rocky V2? Yeah, uh, I have not run tests against soft Rocky. Uh, just for these comparisons, I want to get as close to an apples to apples comparison as possible. So I just so I ran the comparison with soft IWAP because they are essentially implementing the same protocol. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I can uh, look at running uh, Rocky V2 as well. Yeah, um, I have not been using RDMA for too long, but somehow um, this whole mechanism of interleaving between the user space and uh, hacking around in the kernel space doesn't look too optimal. So either RDMA has to move to the user space somehow, uh, or we need to have a different mechanism. It's just my thought, I don't know. Yeah, so I mean, I should be clear here that this is referring to software implementations. All of the hardware implementations uh, have all their work, at, all the data transfer work actually done in the hardware, and, and it's a direct path from their uh, corresponding user space driver to their hardware. Uh, the reason why it's difficult to do this for, I outlined the reasons uh, earlier why that's difficult for a software implementation. Uh, um, and uh, so that's why in the software implementation you, uh, you have to, uh, like soft iWarp and soft Rocky have to do their work, the data transfer work in the kernel. For URDMA, it's just the connection management that has to jump through some hoops between uh, kernel and user space and then uh, yeah, and then once the connection is actually established, then all of the work from then on is in user space. Thank you. Uh, I just like to ask a question about the um, uh, the guarantee of the packet ordering and sequence, as well as the um, how do you manage the window, congestion control window. Yeah. So. As I mentioned, uh, URDMA is running simply over UDP with a small reliability shim. The reliability shim defines a window size and uh, it define and it ensures that the packet ordering is maintained. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, quick question. So uh, how do completion events fit in this fit into this picture? Um, that's that's traditionally mostly just it's always involved the kernel. In the, in the return part, so I'm just curious how, how that fits into this. Yeah, so CQ events are done simply by uh, when, the, uh, pr when the progress thread completes, a, completes something and is uh, about to and put something on the completion queue and it knows it has to send a CQ event, it sends a message to the, it sends a message to the kernel saying, okay, I need you to send back, send me back a completion event uh, because it, ultimately it's the kernel completion event handler that is what notifies the uh, user space event channel. Uh, so we do need that extra message to go uh, into the kernel to make that happen. Okay, uh, so in, in some of the performance slides, I assume that uh, the micro benchmark slides that we just saw, uh, I assume that we, those were really from 
you know, the poll mode statistics as such, and you know, they really, really know completion events involved in any of these measurements, were they? Yes, these were done uh, in a busy poll loop. Okay, thank you.